We can look at the molecular or what's called a kinetic theory of thermal physics. And in this case, we're going to look at the phases of matter. We're going to look at what different phases matter can actually be in. Now we have things called solid, liquid, and gas. A lot of people have heard about these, but let's look at them from a molecular point of view. So we look at the different molecules here. So in a solid, we would say that the molecules are closely packed together and there are strong bonds between them. Now I want to define it a little bit better here. So let's say that they have a fixed volume. So you're going to put them in an enclosed space. They'll have a fixed volume and they will also have a fixed shape. So whatever shape you originally give them, they're going to have the same shape afterwards. So maybe it helps to draw some sort of solid here. So if I draw these molecules, maybe I can draw a whole bunch of little circles here. So these are here will represent each molecule. Now there's going to be bonds between them. So I can draw those bonds. You can see I'm not an artist. Um, but I can try to draw this in 3D as well. So I can draw sort of these little shapes here like this. And I can, of course, draw them like that as well, like this. So then they go like that and like this. Now this is allowed to sort of shake and vibrate a little bit, but it'll still stay in the same volume and in the same shape. So if I put them originally into some sort of cube, they're going to stay in a cube. If I want to be really correct, I guess I should also draw them here and here. I think that's what I was missing there, something like that. So this right here will stay the same volume, the same shape. Now there's actually a former colleague of mine, uh, Wendy McRae, she was actually fantastic. She said, think about, you know, a fidgeting audience. So if you imagine that you go to a concert and everybody has to sit in their seats. So this is all the little people sitting in their seats, but they're excited so they can vibrate a little bit. They can shake as you're moving around uh, within their own seat. They're sort of shaking a little bit, but they don't actually get up and move though. So that's the key thing here. I like that uh, analogy here. So a fidgeting audience. Now for a liquid, we have that the molecules, they can still vibrate, but now they can also actually move. So in this case right here, we'll say that they still have a fixed volume, but what's important here is that the shape can change. Uh, so I'll say shape can change. It doesn't necessarily have to, but it can change. So in order to draw this, maybe I just draw some little, uh, some little particles here in some sort of weird orientation like this. And maybe I draw the bonds between them like this. But actually, it turns out some of them can actually move. So maybe that one goes there, that one goes there. And sometimes they can even break off completely. Now, how do you sort of imagine this? Well, here you can imagine, uh, this is because some of the bonds are actually made, some of them are broken. So here you can think about, you know, if you go shopping, for example, it's, it's like, you know, think about, you know, jostling shoppers. So in other words, you know, if you're out shopping um, and, you know, these are people, you know, walking around, maybe they're in a group, but all of a sudden, you know, people move by each other, some people move around. So this is what a liquid does. It can change its shape, but it still has the same volume. Now we have something else. We have a gas. Now a gas is when the molecules are actually going to fill the container completely. So in this case right here, we would say there's no fixed shape. So in other words, they can take on whatever shape they want. And what's important is that they fill, this is really important here, they'll actually fill a volume. So whatever volume you give them, they'll actually fill it. So if you leave them long enough, they'll actually fill it. And now here you've just got random particles. They're not really, they're not really connected. They're just zipping along. So this right here would be your, your gas. And the way to think about this, this could be like, you know, think about hockey pucks. I'm Canadian, so of course we talk about that. So, you know, think about these things just whizzing along and they can bounce off each other. So this is sort of like, you know, thinking about hockey pucks. And over here you can think about it's like jostling shoppers. And for a solid, you can think about, you know, it's like a fidgeting audience. Now, I think a good way to actually visualize this is, again, to use one of these nice animations from PHET. So I'm going to show you one of these. It's called States of Matter. And I have it here, I think. There we go. So here what we can do is we can see inside our material here. So we have some sort of closed volume here. Okay, so inside that volume, then what happens? we have them in a shape. In this case here, it looks like a square. Now we're looking at neon, we can do it with argon or oxygen or even water, but let's look at neon just to be, just to make it easiest. So look here at the temperature, 13 Kelvin.
I chose neon because it actually has um, a fairly small specific heat capacity and what that means is it doesn't take much energy in order to raise their temperature. So if I give it a little bit of heat the temperature should go up pretty fast. So look at them right now they're in a solid. Do you notice they're still all shaking? Right? But they're still in a solid. That's what a solid looks like. Now as I raise the temperature, so I add some thermal energy, I add heat, I want you to look carefully now at what happens to these little particles now. So although they're shaking, do you notice some of them got broken off? So this one left, for example, and so did that one. But look at the shape, what it's doing. It's slowly sort of filling. Can you see that it's sort of slowly making this flat? It's sort of filling the bottom here. This is more like what a liquid does. So this right here would very well represent a liquid. And if I raise the temperature even more, let's say I go up even more, much more. Let's keep going, let's keep going. Um, now we can see the different particles. Just watch them now, what they're doing. Do you notice that now they're bouncing all over the place? And in fact, they don't really seem linked to each other. They're just bouncing around. So this is a gas. So you see, that was a really nice, easy way to see it. You can also, of course, skip steps. You can say solid here and liquid and then gas. Now I want to show you for water. I think this is even cooler to see. So water, although it looks complicated, here's what's happening. The water itself, this, is, this would be in solid form. So that would be ice. Do you notice it's still vibrating? Now, why does it look more complicated? Well, that's because water has three molecules, uh, sorry, three atoms in it, in one molecule. So I see, you can see here that water has two hydrogens and one oxygen. Now, if you look at what's happening here, can you see each of them, they're wiggling around, but they still are staying in the same shape. That's why it's still a solid. In a liquid, they're doing like what happened with the neon ones, give them time and they actually sort of settle down to the bottom here. So in other words, their shape can change. And once in a while, one goes flinging out. That happens too, right? That's evaporation, for example. So some of the particles actually can leave. Now, what I like is, watch the gas. If I go to gas, so at a higher temperature here, look at this gas, what's happening now. They're all bouncing around. But what I like is this really shows that these particles are not only just bouncing off each other, they also spin. And that tells you something about the energies involved here. So you've got some kinetic energies from them moving, but also from rotating. See, I think that's actually pretty cool to see. So this, I hope, helps to illustrate um, the difference between a solid, liquid, and a gas. I think it's more clear with argon, uh, sorry, with neon. If we say solid, then there's a liquid where they can flow a little bit, and there's gas where they're just floating around. So that puts it all together here.